Hey, guys, so crazy little women there, you know I, I'm gonna give me one. On to Kansas City. Ah, oh, Kansas City, here I come. So what we have here are two of the most talked about motorcycles in the Indian market right now and perhaps of the year. What these are are the Royal Enfield Continental GT650 and the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. And we've come all the way to California to be one of the first ones in the world to have a go on these motorcycles. Now there's a lot to talk about these motorcycles so let's get to it right away. Starting with what lies at the heart of the new Royal Enfield Twins, which is an all-new 648cc single overhead cam parallel twin engine. Now at this point, whatever you know about Royal Enfield engines until now, well, take all of that and throw it out of the window, because this is leagues ahead of what you have experienced or heard about so far. It gets fuel injection, it is oil and air cooled, has 4 valves per cylinder, makes 47 brake horsepower and 52 newton meters of torque and it comes with Royal Enfield's first ever 6-speed gearbox which is slick and never gave us a false shift. And the way all of that powertrain comes together is well of global standards really. Yes, it doesn't have that thump anymore and that's because it is no longer a single cylinder unit and what you have instead is more of a rumble and that's largely due to the 270 degree firing order. Now since it has a counterbalanced crankshaft, only slight mild vibrations can be felt on the foot pegs and the handlebar but that's only noticeable higher up in the RPM band and it isn't something that you would mind at all. The engine makes ample torque with 80% of it coming in as low as 2500 RPM. You can lug this engine and you can rev the guts out of it. At no point does it feel out of breath. However, since the meat of the power is in the low and mid RPM band, you don't necessarily need to rev it out. And if you want those quick overtakes, chances are rare that you would feel the need to downshift. Our route had long straights and twisty corners and the bike was up to all the challenges that came its way. If there was something we wished was better, it was the front end feel of the motorcycle, which tends to feel a bit wobbly and light at high speeds and fast corners. Less so in the Continental. However, this doesn't mean that the bike ever feels nervous or twitchy. It is just a characteristic that you need to keep in mind. The motorcycle feels confident, light and agile and still manages to feel friendly and doesn't take any time to adapt to and that's largely due to the chassis on board which cannot be praised enough. Also, even when we push the motorcycle hard, we never ran out of cornering clearance and that's fantastic. Due credits to the tyres on board, which were purpose-built for the Royal Enfield Twins by Pirelli and despite seeming a bit narrow at first, they have ample grip on offer. Then comes the brakes, which are Biber calipers front and back and come with dual channel ABS. The feedback and the bite is good as well. When it comes to the ride quality, the suspension feels a bit on the stiffer side, especially on the GT. So these were the things that similar on both the motorcycles but despite having so many similarities, they are actually quite different in some ways, which changes their character altogether. Let's start with the styling. The Continental GT650 is wallpaper material and while it looks pretty similar to the Continental 535, there are several tweaks that have been made. The clip-on handlebar now sits a bit higher and the fuel tank is a bit shorter in length as well. Couple that with the rear set foot pegs and the different seat and you have a commanding riding position and a sportier feeling motorcycle. The Interceptor 650 on the other hand has a relatively centre set foot pegs, different seat, different fuel tank and the higher braced handlebar which makes for a relaxing riding position. There are some wind bursts on both the motorcycles but you can sit on the Interceptor all day long. Now we did have to scratch our heads a bit to find the negatives in these motorcycles and there aren't any. Yes, a gear position indicator would have been nice, so would have been a clock and while looks are subjective, perhaps it could have used things like an LED indicator or a projector headlamp but then that's about it. And when you take into account that they are set to price these motorcycles around the 3, 3.5 three lakh mark, these could be the game changers and mark a new phase in the Indian market for Royal Enfield. And with that we come to the end of our first ride review of both these motorcycles and we have to say that we are left mighty impressed. The only question that remains is the kind of pricing that these motorcycles come at. Because if Royal Enfield manages to get that right, well, you might have a motorcycle that can be blindly recommended to almost anyone looking for an upgrade to a bigger motorcycle. 